Before we begin, just a heads up, if you only use wireless Bluetooth earbuds with your Android phone, this video might not be that useful to you. This video will most benefit those who use wired earphones or headphones, often with an external USB-C digital to analog converter. Also, concepts like audio resolution, bit depth, and audio sampling rate will be used during this video. So if you're unfamiliar with these terms, do some basic research and then come back and watch this video. With that said, let's begin. As much as I like Android, in fact I even prefer it to the closed, restrictive and buggy mess that is iOS, there's one aspect of Android that I'm not a big fan of. Apparently, the operating system resamples all audio to 48kHz before sending it out to wired earphones, headphones or a USB DAC. Now when I say resampling, I mean both upsampling and downsampling. So if you're playing a song that is, say, at 44.1kHz, it'll upsample it to 48kHz. Conversely, if you're playing a song that is at 96 kilohertz, it'll downsample it to 48 kilohertz. Now, why should you care about this? Well, because resampling of audio, in most cases, res results in reduced sound quality. And that is where this app, called USB Audio Player Pro, comes in. It bypasses this limitation of Android and sends out the audio signal in the same sampling rate as that of the song that you are playing. However, there are a few settings you'll need to change within the app to achieve this, which is what I'll walk you through in this video. As soon as you open the app, tap on this icon here, tap on Bit Perfect, and then change it to either On or at the very least when possible. So either of these two. As you can see, I've left it to On. What Bit Perfect mode means is that it'll send the audio signal in its purest form without any upsampling or downsampling whatsoever. Heck, it won't even allow you to add equalization to the audio, because again, adding an equalizer would effectively be coloring the sound, and the audio would no longer be in its original form. Next, tap the gear icon at the bottom right corner of the screen. If this option called Internal Audio Driver shows up on your phone, tap on it, and then tap on High Res Direct Driver. Now, tap on Internal High Res Audio, press Up Sample, and turn it to Off. Next, where it says use with Bluetooth output, this box should be checked. Even though Bluetooth in its current form compresses audio, you might still notice a slight improvement in audio quality, as is explained by the setting itself over here. Go back, press Android Audio, and make sure that this box is unchecked. So where it says play through Android, this box should be left unchecked. Go back. Tap on USB audio, tap on upsample, and make sure it is turned off. I'll talk more about upsampling in a minute, but for now, just turn it off. Scroll down to limit sample rate, and make sure it is set to no limit. Finally, tap on USB audio tweaks, and make sure use USB DAC is turned on. This is for those of you who use an external USB-C digital to analog converter. And now that you've made these changes, you can even save these settings and export them as a .txt text file, so that in the future, if you ever have to reset your device, which requires you to reinstall the app, you can simply import the settings from the text file. At this point, I should mention that these are the settings that worked for me on my Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. So depending on your device, some of these settings might be slightly different, although not by much. So I would encourage you to play around with these settings to see what works best for you. Now that you've changed all the required settings, how do you verify that the app is doing what it's supposed to do? Well, you play a song and look for these indicators at the bottom of the screen. Right next to the word direct, it gives us the sampling rate at which the audio signal is being sent out of your device. Next to that, we have the file extension. So whether you are playing an MP3, an AAC, a flat file, etc. And next to that, we have the sampling rate of the song itself and the bit rate. And we can confirm that this is the sampling rate of the song if we tap on these three dots here, go to metadata, and here we see that it is indeed 96 kilohertz. So whenever you are playing music in this app, you want to make sure that these two sampling rates are the same. If these two are the same, it essentially means that no resampling of the audio is taking place. By the way, if any of you are into instrumental music, I would really recommend this album. It's called Live from Studio S2 by Hania Rani. In fact, before I end this video, let me also show you an instance where these two will be different. 
First, I'll turn bit perfect mode off. Then I'll go to settings, internal high res audio, up sample and turn it to on. Now I'll play the song again and keep an eye on this where it says direct. Watch what happens when I play the song. You see it changed. So now it's up sampling the original song which was at 96 kHz to 384 kHz. While down sampling removes data from the original file and therefore reduces audio quality in that way, you might be wondering, well, what's wrong with upsampling? After all, all else being equal, higher sampling rates mean better audio quality, right? Well, only if the file's original sampling rate was higher. In other words, only if the original data was there in the file. What we're doing here is we're just adding a bunch of dummy zeros and ones to the file. We are artificially increasing the sampling rate by adding superfluous data. I did a quick Google search on this before making this video and opinion seems to be divided. Some claim that upsampling does improve audio quality, others maintain that it doesn't. Being an audio purist myself, I personally don't believe in the alleged benefits of upsampling. Besides, you're really missing the point of this whole exercise. The whole point is to experience the audio true to its original form. I think that'll be it for this video. I hope I was able to give you an idea of how to benefit from what is perhaps the most important feature of the app. So that I can keep making educational and informative videos like these, consider making a donation. You can donate in proportion to the value you feel you received from my videos. There's a PayPal link in the description below. In part 2 of this video, I'll walk you through the user interface of this app and the various features that it offers, in addition to a few other settings. Before you purchase the app, go watch that video. Link in the description. As always, thank you for watching.